Rome. Rome. The fourth beast is Rome. This is, this is, in this history, it's pagan Rome, isn't it? Okay, yes, but what you, yeah, so what you've got in this history, remember, you've got one, two, three, the little horn. So I'm bringing Daniel chapter 7 and imprinting it on this history here, taking it into the future where you see a similar pattern in verse 45, which is the same history of Revelation 17. Revelation 17 and verse 45 are the same history, they cover the same time frame, and you have the same scenario where you have two support systems holding up the little horn, as you did in Daniel 7. The reason um, is at the end of the world you have a threefold union, and that threefold union in the, t- in the idea of Revelation 17 is discussing the sixth, seventh, and the eighth head. Remember, it says there are only seven heads, um, but it introduces one, which, it, which I'm introducing as the eighth. So the eighth has this model, if you like, of being the fifth, and that's why I put it as number eight. And I, I said before, it's like a phantom head, it doesn't really exist, but it is there. The first and second arm that, that helped the people was that? That's in this history. Yeah, but the first was Rome helping uh, uh, the Pope to ascendancy, giving authority to see and all that. And, and the, the second arm you said was the. the, the no, the second arm are the seven nations of Europe that are left. Both, pe- both sides are helping the papacy. Yeah. Both sides are helping the papacy. If you ask the question, you had ten horns, and then you had seven. You go from ten to seven, yes? And these horns are plucked up by somebody. Who plucks them up? You don't have to answer, I'll, I'll tell you. The power that plucks up the three horns is pagan Rome. Pagan Rome is the power that plucks up the three horns, and who does he do it for? He does it for the papacy. Okay, so these arms who stand up for papal Rome are the seven horns and pagan Rome. And I'm going to use different language. I'm going to use Western Rome and Eastern Rome. Western Eastern Rome, because Pagan Rome is now the Eastern Empire, uh, the Byzantine Empire, and the Seven Horns occupy the West. So it says, arms shall stand up for him, and then it says, the arms are going to pollute the sanctuary of strength. We've already dealt with that, but in 330 AD, we did Daniel chapter 8, Revelation 13, and now it comes in the very next verse, it says, the arms shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. Pagan Rome voluntarily leaves the sanctuary of its strength, thus polluting it, and vacating that space for Papal Rome in 330 AD, and Papal Rome then becomes the king of the north. <coughs> Take away the daily. This taking away of the daily is the same history that's given in Daniel chapter 12. And the date for this is 508 AD, when in Daniel chapter 12, verse, is it verse 11 I think? It says, From the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So the taking away of the daily in Daniel 12.11 is a taking away of daily in this verse, and it occurs in 508. <coughs> and then it says, place the abomination that des- of desolation. So, this is again connected to this idea of the taking away of the daily, and thirty years later, in 538, 
the daily, sorry, uh, Papal Rome is now being placed, it's been placed as the ruler of this world. And how does it achieve that? By taking down the three horns. The third horn is taken down by 538 AD. Everybody familiar with that history of the, of the, three, hor- of the three horns? So you see, <coughs> he receives power, seat and authority. The, the papacy is being placed as the supreme ruler in 538 after it's taken down these um, three empires in exactly the same way that after 31 BC when pagan Rome had taken away the nation of Greece they three em- empires uh, Syria, Egypt and the glorious land of Daniel 11 verse 9 where then it ruled for a time from 31 BC to 330 AD then as soon as that happens it loses its title for the king of the north <coughs> I just want to give a date here for its receiving of power it comes from this term here where arms shall stand for him now there are the seven horns and pagan Rome that stand up for the papacy but there's one date that really sticks out um, as an eventful time and that's 496 AD let me uh, double confirm that it's that date Yep, 496, and 496 happens when, um, what's his name? Clovis. Clovis, that's right, when Clovis converts from paganism uh, to Catholicism and gives his arms, his support to the papacy. So he receives his power in 496 AD. And the reason why it's important to understand Daniel 7, that the horns are pagan Rome, is because it said in Revelation 13 that the dragon or pagan Rome is going to give it its power, but we find here that the, power, that the entity spoken about is actually Clovis. Okay? It's actually Clovis. Okay, <clears throat> remember when we said the dragon, pagan Rome, gives paper Rome its power seat and great authority and the power that it receives is 496 AD but I'm marking 496 AD at the conversion of a French king okay it's a French king but that French king is one of the seven horns and the seven horns was part of pagan Rome okay also there's another connection between those in Revelation chapter 11 in Revelation chapter 11, which is dealing with the French Revolution, what happens at the French Revolution? <clears throat> we go to verse 13. I'm just going to quote here. You don't need to turn to it. It says, verse 13, And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. Revelation 11 verse 13 says, The tenth part of the city falls. A tenth part of the city. Okay, there are only two cities mentioned in the Bible. Jerusalem and Babylon. So this tenth part of the city is the tenth of the city of Babylon. Okay, who is the city of Babylon? Babylon goes from literal Babylon, then it goes to pagan Rome, then on to papal Rome. So when it says a tenth part of the city, it's talking about the tenth or one of those ten horns of Daniel chapter 7 and we know that this history here is the history of France so France is the tenth part of the city of Babylon or it's the tenth part of Babylon in the history that it's it's talking about in this time period so when we say here that this here is Clovis and Clovis is one of the seven horns the seven horns are actually part of Babylon because they're part of pagan Rome so it's It's consistent within itself to say that the dragon gave its power in 496 and that power was the French armies. So Clovis was the king of France. He was the king of France. And what about the demon? Uh, the he shall take away the daily. <coughs> what does that first function? Take away the daily, the date is 508. Is that the question that you had? The daily is uh, <coughs> 
Okay, so the history for this here, there's a history before this. <coughs> the history is that Clovis, who is the Franks, goes to war with the Visigoths. And they have warfare between themselves between the years 507 and 508. And because of the strategic position of the Visigoths in that time frame, once the Visigoths came off the scene in 508, all effective opposition for the papacy had been done away with. All the opposition had been done away with. The Visigoths are not one of the three horns, by the way. Okay? But they were standing in opposition to the work of the papacy. And once they come off the scene, there's very little opposition offered against the papal rise. And so that's why we mark the date, 508, when the daily is taken away, so that by 538, 30 years later, the papacy has got no opposition. That's correct. But not, not, paganism hasn't been totally done away with, but the main opposition has been done away with and it comes out of the scene. <coughs> so that's, this talks about the transfer of power from pagan to papal Rome and it happens in these three stages that we've just discussed here in the verse. <coughs> I want to bring some parallel into this history um, into our history. <laughs> What's your question? The Ostrogoths, what? Yes. Should we be um, What I just, what I'm. Um, <coughs> What I just suggested was that this power here that's taken away in 508 are not the three horns. The three horns are the Hurlii, Vandals and Ostrogoths. The Hurlii get taken away in 493, the Vandals in 534 and the Ostrogoths in 538. The 538 when the Ostrogoths come down mark this date. But there's some work that needs to be done before that. Before you can get to 538, you need some preparation work done and you have to get rid or start the process of getting rid of this pagan opposition. And that really happens in 508 when the Visigoths are taken down. That's right. <clears throat> so let's make some application here. We had here the pollute, they're going to pollute the sanctuary of strength, okay, and that occurred in 330 AD. <coughs> Let me... Um, <coughs> let me read this portion that we read yesterday I think, or it's, maybe it's Friday, it's from 13 Manuscript Releases, page 394, I always, already gave you the reference of this. It says, we have no time to lose. Troublous times are before us. The world is stirred up with the spirit of war. Soon the scenes of trouble spoken of in the prophecies will take place. The prophecy in the 11th of Daniel has nearly reached its complete fulfilment. Much of the history that has taken place in fulfilment of this prophecy will be repeated. Okay, so she's going to say there's a repeat of history that occurs. Then she says, in the 30th verse, which is the verse that we've just been discussing, a power is spoken of that shall be grieved. I'm sorry. <coughs> 13 manuscript releases, 394. 13 MR, 394. We have come to a time, we have no time to lose, troublous times are before us. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. Soon the scenes of trouble spoken of in the prophecies will take place. The prophecy in the 11th of Daniel has nearly reached its complete fulfilment. Much of the history that has been taken place in fulfilment of this prophecy will be repeated. In the 30th verse, a power is spoken of 
but shall be grieved and return and have indignation against the Holy Covenant, and so shall he do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the Holy Covenant. And then she goes on to quote from verses 31 to 36. Okay, so she quotes from verses 30 to 36.